I actually miss my flight. Can you imagine that? Gosh, it's such a shitty feeling. So, as you can see, I'm in KLIA again for the second time. Paid a hefty fee for them to put me on the next flight down to Singapore. I'm gonna be like two hours later than the previous group that went. I was here earlier at 6 a.m. to catch a 7 a.m. flight down to Singapore for an Audi event where I'll be checking out the new Audi e-tron, the same one that uh, GC Ma saw in uh, San Francisco recently, and also to experience the Audi on demand experience. Before I highlight to you what are the cool features I think the e-tron has, I'd like you to check out this viral video that Audi did. 5 million views in 3 weeks. Check it out. Link in the video description below. I'm gonna board the flight now. I'll catch you soon. It's been an absolutely calamitous morning, but I'm glad I'm finally here in Singapore at the Audi brand experience at the Marina Bay Sands Expo. Check this out, man. We've got a hell of a futuristic venue, so coming to show you a few interesting concepts that they got. Now, Audi has been talking about going full electric for the longest time now and they've been going like full on to show that they are really serious about it with so many full electric concepts. But I think the best thing that epitomizes their efforts is the setup of this place. Check it out, man. It's so 2018. It's so cool, so futuristic. But here, I'm going to show you the Vision Gran Turismo right now. So that guys is the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo. Can you imagine it took them only 11 months to design and create this thing? So it's actually one of those concepts where you can actually drive on the road and in fact it's actually used as one of the taxi cars for the Formula E race where Audi will take customers out for hot laps in that car. Can you imagine that? Not sure if you'll be able to acquire one or even try one out on the track but if you really do want to have a feel of this car, it's available virtually on your Gran Turismo game. So apparently this is the first time an expo of this scale has ever been yes. held by Audi in Singapore. In fact, after speaking with them, this is the first time three concepts have been on this tiny island at the same time. Quite a sense of humor, these Audi guys. But what a great job. I mean, look at the setting here. So here are all the Audi Sport RS models. You have the RS3 here. Just absolutely love it. I have a special thing for hatchbacks, man. And although I'm a BMW guy, there is something about Audi RS cars that just really tickles my heartstrings. In the back here, we have the RS4 Advan. Introduced, I think, just about at the end of last year, early this year. And I mean, You've seen the pictures, it looks absolutely amazing, but nothing can actually prepare you for how mesmerizing, I guess, this car actually is. It's, it's that futuristic design, the sharp edges, the, the heft, the size, the sheer presence. And look at that face, man. Can you imagine driving a car like that with your family on, yet capable of tailgating almost every supercar imaginable? Most supercars that can do 100, 0 to 100 in less than 4 seconds, this car will absolutely keep up with those cars. No problem at all. So the group of Malaysian motoring media representatives, uh, including myself, we just had a little chat slash interview with the managing director of Audi Singapore, Jeff Mannering. And uh, obviously, with uh, Audi's current development in Malaysia, we ask him a lot of uh, questions obviously on the future and the direction of Audi Malaysia. The main topic of conversation revolved around CKD cars 
and quality control. Uh, a few of us brought up the fact that obviously there were a lot of complaints about uh, after sales service, really poor after sales service and also in 2018, 2019, this is one thing you can expect. Better quality control. They're going to be a lot harder on um, Audi authorized dealers to make sure that these things they can try to eradicate as much as possible, reduce the number of incidences where authorized dealers are not diligent enough in their workmanship and whatnot. So, in terms of uh, CKD cars, which is highly necessary, I guess, especially with um, Audi's competitors, Mercedes and BMW being so prominent in that scene. They've obviously not been able to promise anything or even give any sort of assurance, but what I can tell you based on our conversation is that it is under consideration. It could happen in the next year, next two years, next three years. They can't give us an answer yet, but it's in the works. One thing that's also quite interesting that we talked about in the interview is that Audi recognizes the importance of um, social engagement the need to change customer perception to engage potential and current customers brand loyalists premium segment buyers they acknowledge the fact that they need to engage in these people uh, with these people a lot more apparently there will be a, a lot more activities held to get more people more involved with Audis more in touch with Audis which is, I feel, quite necessary, man. I mean, look at what the other brands are doing and the events that they are coming up with and the kind of identity they're building for themselves. It's not that Audi makes bad cars. They don't by any means. It's just that a combination of unfortunate events have led them to this, to this stage, to this current predicament. So I was talking about all the concepts available here and there is the Icon and the Elaine and that is the Icon. Now what's so special about this car is that it's sort of like the beacon of Audi's initiative into driverless self-driving cars and that particular car is actually capable of level 5 autonomous driving. I'm going to bring you closer to that car and show you what's really unique about the interior. Now as you can see, the interior is actually void of your usual cockpit and your steering wheel. This is actually a self-driving car. Look how much more space that actually creates. That absence of a steering wheel and all your usual drive controls. Suicide doors opening up to abundance of space, plenty of leg room. You won't have problems with leg rooms with this car. Now, if you know me, you know that electrification is not really my thing. Self driving cars are not really my thing. And I think I speak for a lot of you guys out there as well. Most of you guys still want to hear your engine rumble, you still want to take control of the steering wheel yourself. But honestly, if this is the future, if the future is this stylish, I think sign me up man because I've learned to change my perceptions. I feel like these cars now need to exist. I love old cars so much that I feel that these cars need to exist so that I can keep my old cars. We can't possibly be making new cars that still guzzle fuel, that still rely on fossil fuel. There's just no way to sustain that future. There's just no way. And I mean, come on, if you get picked up in this, get chauffeured in this, you arrive in this, looking so stylish, and if these car manufacturers, not just Audi, if these guys can actually promise level 5 autonomous driving, sign me up. Personally, I feel like these things are a bit evil because they're taking away internal combustion engines from us. But in order to preserve our future, I feel like these are the necessary evil man. You know, these things, it's time. It's time for these things to exist. Whether or not we are ready for it, whether or not the mechanics are ready for it, whether or not our infrastructure is ready for it, it just has to start somewhere. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, or rather what Audi is trying to say is just based on our talk, our interview with the managing director earlier is that they're going back to brass tanks. 
for Malaysia at least. It's very clear that on a global scene or even on a regional scene that they've got a lot on their plate. Electrification, self-driving cars, concierge services. For Malaysia at least, they're going to go back to brass tacks. They're going to go back to basics and look at all the fundamentals that perhaps they have overlooked, perhaps even neglected, that they can work on to try to win back that positive customer perception again. That is what I at least understand from the conversation. I really hope I did not misinterpret the words, uh, misunderstand his intentions or, or Audi, uh, Singapore's intentions on Malaysia as now they are steering us. I'd really like them to do well. I'd really like to see them to do well because there are a lot of Audi enthusiasts out there and I'm pretty sure due to certain reasons that love has been deterred maybe. I really love to see these beautiful cars being competitive again with the two main German brands in Malaysia because honestly, the roads are getting, our roads are getting a little more bland man. More and more bland, it's all the same cars, different variants, but just, it's just two of the same brands. I really like to see more and more competition in the premium market segment. Right guys, so as I have said earlier that there will be a lot more concept cars, I'm really sorry I couldn't show you. Uh, especially the Elaine and the e-tron all electric SUV. Uh, this is due to time constraints and obviously because your friend here missed his flight, so short of a few hours, terribly sorry. For more information on the e-tron though, the e-tron all electric SUV, do check out GCMA's video, the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is me signing off from Singapore. This is the Audi brand experience. Thanks for watching.